Hello, I'm Kathy Vogan and I'm going to give you some spot training in the use of Vanishing Point. This is a workflow that spans across two programs, Photoshop and After Effects. So I'm going to turn a 2D image into a 3D scene, supposing that it's somewhere that you can't afford to go to but you'd really like that shot. Some little nice little tricks that are have been developed between programs. In this case it's between Photoshop and After Effects and the effect in common, or the pathway of the workflow is called Vanishing Point. So I've got this um, image here, I'd really like my camera to go down this hallway. Um, just like to take a nice look at that ceiling. So I'm going to filters and I'm going to choose Vanishing Point. Okay, so I'm going to take this tool here that is going to enable me to draw lines in perspective. I'm just going to draw the actual shape of this. So I can draw around actual forms. As you can see, there's a line there, the lines of a, a grid. I'll just uh, take that up just a little bit more making sure that it is lining up with the image. Now if I hold down my command key, I can actually draw off lines in perspective as far as I can go. Okay, starting over at the other side, if I hold down the command key, get this looking like a, an imaginary, imaginary door at the end of the corridor, something like that. I'm doing this very quickly. So, We've got the whole lot now, look at every wall, and probably this is going to be a little bit imprecise, I probably want to bring that up a little bit, but let's just see how it goes. Okay, so what I have to do is export this as a VPE, a .VPE, for After Effects CS3. I'll create a new folder because it actually makes a new image out of each surface there. So I want to create a folder so that they're all together. So I'm going to call this uh, BASC. We'll do. Okay, it's save. So that's just exporting now out for After Effects as a .vpe composition. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go over to After Effects and open this up. Silica. Yeah, basic .vpe and open. And as you can see, there's a number of different things that have come in here, but if I open the comp, you'll see that, um, whoa, it's a little bit turned around. So let's just uh, rotate that. So you can see there's a parent here, and with this parent, of course, these are all 3D layers. Uh, so parent, we can easily just rotate it around a little bit. I'm going to rotate that on the Z-axis so we, we get the thing vertically. So now I've sort of got that in the right orientation, I can open up my camera and let's go for a bit of a zoom, let's see what it looks like. So if I take this back a fair bit and then just rotate the parent a little bit on the x-axis so you've got a good view of what we've got here. Alright, let's, let's just animate this, uh, this camera, so we'll zoom back in again. And I think I need to put this X rotation back to zero again. Okay. Lovely. And that's looking pretty much like what I had in uh, my original photo. Uh, so, just to finish this off now, what I've done is I've made, because that photo was a rather odd aspect ratio, um, very high res, but um, not exactly the aspect ratio we wanted. So I've just changed the composition size to 720 by 576 power D1 DV widescreen, uh, 25 frames a second. Uh, by default, it will just make it 30, so just be careful about that. Um, and also, I have made sure that on that parent, um, I've got collapse transformations taped. Collapse transformations will wait until the uh, final position in space. Uh, to render, to calculate the um, the pixels, I suppose, and give you the best possible quality. Always use collapse transformations when you are bringing in uh, 
any kind of uh, vectorial object as well. But um, yeah, really important in this case. Make all the difference in the world to the quality of what we're doing. So also I've put in a couple of keyframes here so that uh, we get a decent kind of a camera move. So I'm just zooming in here. Looks like very low quality here. Um, look better if we render it of course but as you can see there's the camera movement and of course I could have uh, I could have gone anywhere I want with this camera yeah really looking at a 3d object and uh, God that was cheaper than a, a plane ticket wasn't it now obviously if you have people in a scene like this you'd want to put them on separate layers different distances as well in said space so we get some kind of parallax difference between the different elements when we zoom in remember this is even though it looks pretty fancy this is actually just a 2d image to start with 